Okay now, so for this video I'm going to show you how to create the illusion of depth using tone, so like black and white color variants. So let's go with a sphere, so first I don't really want a solid line, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and use my shimmer here to just make a circle. There. Smeared that on. Cut it back. Now, still just looks like a circle though. A smeared circle on a page. Not exactly what we want. To give it depth, we have to do a bit more than just put color on there. First, Let's give you a shadow. Say the light source is coming from up this way. So, let's get a quick line here. Oh, there it's coming in darker than I wanted it. Mark that. And that. That's just to give a rough idea of where the shadow would be. So, let's see. Let's go with that. And it'll go out to about this line. We'll curve it back. Now you don't want solid lines here once again. Smear that in. Give be a nice dark shadow. Especially once. Blended. This shadow here that I'm working on right now is called the cast shadow. And there's several pieces of light involved in making the illusion of death. We have the cast shadow, we have the occlusion shadow, which is kind of like this dark area underneath the, at the bottom of the sphere and edge of the shadow here, the extra dark spot that is essentially where the reflected light doesn't hit. We have a lighter area up here, which is where the reflected light hits. Of a darker area, kind of about the middle, and I'll follow along the set, the widest point. We'll want to have it as slight curve to emphasize the curve of the sphere. This is will be probably a little easier if you ever if you just do it from life. But I don't have a sphere with me right now. So, smear that in, and the core shadow is this centerpiece here, and it's going to be dark, uh, probably one of the, the darkest. Not, it's not always the darkest when you're working from life, but for the demonstration it'll be the darkest piece. It'll be darker than all the other shadow and light. Then we have, up here we have the half tone, that's where the light is hitting, so it'll be lighter than all the other pieces. And on the half tone, there will be an even lighter spot. It can vary in size and shape a little bit. And essentially that is going to be what is called the highlight. That's where the light is hitting the most direct. And so, we work with this. And blend it in the reflected light will be darker will be darker than the half tone so we have to work with that and you'll probably have to do some adjustment with that to get it to work just right for you to get rid of the lines if they show up that sort of thing you can emphasize the shape a bit with contrast on the outside Because the background is all white. Probably put this edge of a line in here. Size the little bit more occlusion shadow to give the emphasis that where the break is between the shadow and the sphere. This is not turning out as well as I would 
hoping, but it's better than nothing. So, all right, it has a bit more depth to it. You can see a little bit more of a curve. Already emphasized by the color. Or the tone, as it were. So, work on that. If the half tone's too dark, you can line it up like that. It will be lighter towards the highlight and darker as you get towards the core shadow. And want to blend those two, which can be the really tricky part, at least for me. Just getting those two to work together while maintaining that variance and you want to squint at it to see if there's a, enough variance you can see it while squinted but only just and so you end up with a sphere that has the illusion of depth Probably should have cut, made the shadow a little more oval in shape to give it a better view, but even then, it gives you see you, can, it, you want the kind of dark along the occlusion shadow because that gives the idea of where it meets the table, as it were. And I, yeah, I hope that helps. Have fun. Bye.